Good afternoon, Mr. Pastor Sampson. Welcome to Tuesday afternoon, Bible State. We want to come to you with the subject, just simply the truth. The truth is so important to the, to the, to the believer that God and Jesus sent a spirit of truth. And in that sending of the spirit of truth, that spirit of truth was to teach, to reveal, to supply, to give authority, to empower. To reveal God's word to the believer. Now, it, 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 the Bible says it was supposed to lead us into all truths. Now, I want to make a statement about the other side, Satan. Satan's only weapon is that to deceive. That's why it says in, in, the Re in Revelation that he deceived the whole world. Because his only weapon is to deceive. He makes a a man or a woman that is lost think that they can live without God, but yet still needing the life and the breath of life from God to even exist. It makes a man think he's a woman. That's what Satan does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy your identity, which is supposed to be the image and likeness of God. Even if you are lost, it was God that created you. And if you're trying to live outside of him in spiritual Babylon, you're deceived. Any man or any woman that tries to live outside of God when they need him to awake, when they need him to awake, let me say it one more time for the Holy Spirit. When they need him to awaken them in the morning and then they need him for every breath of life that they take. So there's a problem. And the problem is we give Satan's power because we give Satan the thoughts and the imaginations of our mind. We're not up on what God says because we're not living by every word that receded out of the mouth of God, but we're living and leaning to our own understanding and we're leaning to uh, denominational doctrines and we're leaning to what my denomination is teaching. So let's really look at the situation. What we really want to do is look at the situation. Because see, Paul has not quit teaching. And I know Paul is a part of the Bible. Peter has not yet quit teaching. Even though they left earth some 2,000 years ago, they are still teaching. And the Holy Spirit is still revealing revelation from what Isaiah, from what Daniel, from what David, from what Moses, from what Noah, from what Lot, what all of them did, the Bible is still revealing fresh matter from on high. So number one is the church is one God, God of heaven, creator of all. One Jesus, the son that died on the cross for all mankind's sin. That he may give salvation, crucified and resurrected, and the Holy Spirit. We need to look because what we're, we're doing, we're taking the word of God. And we're going to church sent with sincere hearts, but only to be deceived. We'll say that I have a higher level of education about God. How can that be? We'll say that, that my church is bigger than your church, so we can't mingle with you. But the whole thing that what, what Jesus did is about love and unity of the Bible. Everything that God did is about the act of love. Everything that Jesus did came in an act to reveal and manifest God's love. And the Holy Spirit comes to produce that love. Not only for you to love God, but for you to love other people. Love and unity is being destroyed because man and woman is going to church, being deceived, number one. They'll say that they love everybody. They'll say that they can be a deacon and got envy and strife and jealousy in their heart against their brother and their sister. They'll say that they can be a bishop, but hate the small church because the small church is not bringing as much money. You cannot go in God's house without love and with the spirit of error and qualify yourself to be righteous 
with a spirit of error and not operating in the spirit of truth. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, in the strong name of Jesus, first and foremost, Father, we thank you, Lord. For all that you are, let your fresh manna fall down from heaven on our hearts. Saturate us, Lord, with your pure water. That we may be purified and justified to do your will. Open hearts, open souls, open minds, and lead God in direct, heal, touch, and bless. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Amen. What we want to do is we want to identify what I just said, so we're going to move right on to John 14. And we're going to go to John 14, 26, and here's what it says. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Who did it say? Did it say theology? Did it say the denomination? It said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you will bring all things. So when there's an appointed time that comes up, it is the Holy Spirit that brings at that appointed time what you need to carry out your righteous act. So you're saying, what are you saying, preacher? Here's what I'm saying. Let's look at John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth, talking about the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwell with you and shall be in you. Talk about that spirit of truth. So now, first and foremost, we got to get an understanding there is one spirit for the believer. It's called the Holy Spirit. And he just documented that it will teach you. He just documented that the world cannot have it. So we go to church, and when we go to church, we go to church letting Satan get an advantage of us. We go to church with things that are not right in the church. So we want to simply talk about the truth. And when we simply talk about the truth, we get an understanding of some things. And let us understand something. When we look at the at the at the at the Bible, the Bible is a book of knowledge given by God, 66 books. He asked us to study to show ourselves approved. But yet still, when man gets a little knowledge about God's word, instead of them humbling themselves to instruct as if Ephesians 4, 11 don't exist in the Bible where he said, I give you the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, to edify, which means to educate the saints. So Paul is still educating. The Holy Spirit is still revealing. The Holy Spirit is still teaching. Isaiah is still educating. <coughs> Daniel is still educating. Daniel 7 through Daniel 12 is about our time. But we'll get a little word from God, and the next thing you know, we are apostle or prophet, exalting ourselves, puffing ourselves up, because we think we got more knowledge than anybody else. Looking down on the brethren while we exalt ourselves, because now we are an apostle, because we think we know something about God's word. And the truth about the matter is, when you become wise with God's word, you become a fool. Because you start exalting yourself, puffing yourself up. Oh, we're going we, we gonna to talk about this. The real deal is nothing God did through Jesus Christ was nothing outside of love and unity. It was not about you knowing and having the knowledge and puffing yourself up to look down as others. It wasn't about the big church looking down at the little church. It wasn't about the white church looking at the black church and the black church looking at the white church. They ain't neither Greek nor Jew, male nor female. The church is messed up because the church is puffing itself up because of the things that God has given and God never meant or intended for love and unity to be left out. And love and unity is so binding that the church is stumbling 
over itself because they're trying to have church without obeying in obedience to God. Let me prove my point. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 8. And we're going to back up to Galatians. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 8. We're going to, we're going to go back to Galatians. 1 Corinthians 8. Now, here's what it's saying. The Corinthian church was well-learned people. Paul was talking and addressing to the Corinth, addressing the Corinthian church about eating idle food. But some of the people had puffed themselves up because they had knowledge of what was supposed to be doing with the idle food. So they were looking down on their brothers because they felt like they had more knowledge. So this is what they did. Let us read 1 Corinthians 8. Now it's touching things, offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffed up, but love edifies. Knowledge that is puffed up, but love edifies. Knowledge that is puffed up is pride. It makes you look down on people. And everybody is talking about my pastor and my church when the whole thing is about you being saved and the pardon of your sins, that your soul may be restored, that you may prosper as your soul prospers. And it ain't about things on the earth. It ain't even about you. It's about God trying to save his creation from one that put his hands on them and created something called sin and separated what he made from his own hands with something called a curse of sin. And so therefore God had to move through the love of God and send his son Jesus that we might be redeemed. And we are taking the provisions of being redeemed by salvation and being delivered by salvation. And we are propping ourselves up and we are walking around like we are something. And the only one that can be something is Jesus the Christ. He was the one crucified. He was the one resurrected. He's the one in Matthew 16 said he's building the church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. But you're going to church and supposed to be going to church with a unity and a love. But you are looking down on your brothers or your sisters at another church because you want to prove to them with your pride and puffed up self that you are more better than them because you think you know a little bit more about God, you think you a little bit closer to God than anybody else. So you take knowledge and you puff yourself up. That's just one. Where you being deceived at. What we are talking about is we simply want to know the truth. We actually started out, we wanted to know what love really is. I'm here to tell you tonight that if you don't have something called gratitude, you will never love God. If you don't have something called gratitude, you will never love your fellow man. Because gratitude is the thankfulness of what someone does for you. If you don't have a thankfulness of what God did when he sent his son Jesus to the cross for you and you didn't have a right. See, because grace is a refined motion to make it move in a direct line from God to you to show you that he is Luke. When you receive that refined motion called grace and gratitude and love from God, it's supposed to produce a gratitude in you to say, look what God has done for me. And your heart is supposed to become respectful. It's supposed to become thankful to God. And if you get your heart right with God, and if you fall in love with God, you will love mankind because anytime you're right with God, everything else works out all right. So you're being deceived because you're going to church with a puffed up attitude called pride 
and you are coming before a father. That's just one aspect of Satan being able to bring people into God's church house with a spirit of error. Let's look at what Galatians 5 says, and then let us back up and come back right here. When we look at Galatians 5, look at Galatians 5 for me. Galatians 5 is going to give us a piece of information that we need to back up. We need to get a hold of Galatians 5. Listen to what he says. We're going to look at Galatians 5, 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Lose not liberty for the occasion to the flesh. <coughs> But by love, serve one another. But by love, serve one another. Let's move on. For all the law is fulfilled. In the word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But be ye led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. What spirit? That spirit that the world can't have that John 14, 26 was talking about. 14, 17 was talking about. Then he goes on to say in 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, vagrance, immorality, Immonination, wrath, strife, seduction, hearsays, envy, murder, drunkenness, reveal, reveling, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So if you are going oh. to church, with any of those fruits that the flesh produces, there is no way that you can be calling yourself a believer or else you are deceiving yourself to exalt yourself like Lucifer did above the obedience to God. Because God is telling you without love in 1 Corinthians 13, let us go here. God is telling you in 1 Corinthians 13. Without love, you're nothing. So now, you're going to church, and because you broke, you apostle, you prophet, you got no love for mankind, you got no love for yourself, but for, 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 for God, so you're in love with yourself, so you're stuck in powerless time. What Paul is talking about, loving yourself. So therefore, you go to church, and you don't love God enough to obey him, and I'm going to prove that in a minute. You don't love God enough to obey him, so you rise above being obedient, and you simply say, I don't need to love everybody. I can go with every spike, jealousy, fornication, and I can go to church and be an apostle, but I don't have to obey God. You're being deceived. Let me prove it to you. Though I speak without the tombs of men and angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move, remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. The word just said in 1 Corinthians 13. If you have not love, I don't care if you 
you got all knowledge, I don't care if you burn your body, I don't care what you do if you have not loose. You cannot go to church praying and laying things on the altar and hating that deacon over there because he don't meet your specification. Telling Sister Sarah on the bike because she wears a mini skirt and wears makeup, she going to hell. You don't have a hell or a heaven to send nobody to. You don't have a gift that you can claim and treat it to your own understanding. You got to lean to God's understanding. And let's talk about it. Let's go a little farther. And so, therefore, he's telling you, he said, about your spiritual gifts. If every time I see you, you speaking in tunes, who are you speaking to? And you're not edifying the church unless you have an interpreter. So why are you always speaking in tunes? Is it to make somebody think that you are closer to God than they are? So you got a war language? So you were speaking in tunes? The Bible said don't do that. Well, you, of course, is going to exalt yourself to show your spiritual gift, but the gift is not yours. The gift is an anointing that comes from God through the Holy Spirit. So for you to stand up and call on it just because you want to show you would up a ship on everybody else and you, you a little bit holier than everybody else, you are being deceived. We're talking about simply the truth. People are going to church. There are 35,000 denominations in the world. And every one of them is claiming they are right. And the only one that I can actually vouch that is true is the one that Jesus Christ is building in the gates of Hazel will not prevail. The one that Jesus Christ laid down his life for. Satan He's got an advantage because he's blinding the mind of the church. And not only do we have to stop there, we don't have to stop there. We can actually look at 13, 14. We can look at 13, 14. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Now listen to what he said. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in the love of God, in the communion of the Holy Ghost, be with you all. Listen to what he says. He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of the Holy Ghost be with us all. Now, do you understand what they're saying? Let me break that down. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, which means it's unmerited gratitude towards you, a refined motion that God placed towards you a favor, that God placed towards you a blessing, that God favored towards you because of what you call love. So now, when we actually look at you saying, I love everybody, I'm afraid you might want to leave off the air right now. Because this next scripture that I'm going to take you to is going to absolutely tell you what the Bible, according to God, says love to God is. Let me say this one more time. Absolutely, unequivocally, I'm going to give you a scripture to actually tell you what loving God is all about. And if you are not loving God in this way, if you are not using this way, if you are not exercising this way, then your love towards God is nothing but a fruit of empty lips and nothing in the heart. You say, well, how are you going to do that, Pastor Samson? I'm going to do it because the Bible tells me the truth will set you free, and we are looking for the truth today. We are tired of being seduced and beguiled, going to church with a sincere heart, being lied to in the church, taking up and raising Hundreds of thousands of dollars if on the poor pit that's supposed to be God, while Satan is using the one standing in the poor pit to deceive us because they're not telling us what God is doing in this day right here. The Bible has told us what love to God is. And if the pastor does not teach you what love to God is, when nothing is no good without love, then what? Are you paying your pastor a salary for? Because if he can't set you 
on the understanding of what love really is to God. Then nothing else that you take to church ain't going to work. Because without love, 1 Corinthians 13, nothing is no good. Let's go to 2 John, 1 John. Let's go to 2 John. Let's go to 2 John. Let's look at 1 John first. Let's look at 1 John 4 8. First John 4 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Did you hear that? Did you hear what they say? Let me say it one more time. First John 4 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the perpetuation for our sin. Now, watch this. Let me read this one more time. In he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Now let's see how do we get this love for God. How do we get? Let's look at First John 5, 3. First John 5, 3. How do we get this love? Yeah. That without, we are not of God. How do we get this love? First John 5, 3. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commands and his commands are not grievous. Yeah. What did he just say? It says, for this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. Did you hear what it said? Yes. It said, This is the love of God that you keep his commandments. Let's look at Second <clears throat> John. Let's double down. Let's get confirmation. Let's look at Second John. Second John 6, because there's only one chapter in Second John. Second John 6 says, And this is love that we walk after his commandments this is the command that is as ye have heard from the beginning ye should walk in it let me read it one more time and this is love that we walk after his commandments you saying you loving god and you are not obeying god's word but you in love with God, you love, oh, I love the Lord. But you are not obeying nothing. You are in the church house, and you before nope. you get it right with your brother or your sister, you run over there to the pray to the prayer uh, 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 closet, and then you 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 don't even get your knot right. You're not obeying. You take envy, strife, and jealousy. You take wisdom and knowledge of your own self and puff your own self up. Look down at other brothers and sisters, and you're not using unity and love of God because you're not using obedience to God, and obedience is better than sacrifice. This is love to God, is that you obey his commandment. Now, I didn't write this. This is the Bible, but I believe it. So you were telling me you love God, but you're not obeying. Here's what the whole thing is glued together with as far as love and unity in the New Testament. He said, love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. And in Mark, he said, with all our understanding and love your neighbor as yourself. And he just shows you it through Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 without love. I don't care if you got all revelation. I don't care if you burn your body. I don't care what you got. Without love, you're nothing but an empty sounding symbol. 
But yet still we exalt ourselves. Convince ourselves through deception. That we're going to be all right. We can do what we want to do when we want to do it. But the church is not man. Paul says, your body belongs to Christ. 1 Corinthians 6.15 He said, your body belongs to Christ. So how do you feel like you can lean to your own understanding and puff your own self up because you got a little bit of knowledge or because you got a gift that the Holy Spirit was sent from God to give you and every time you turn around, you trying to show somebody your spiritual gift and that's not even what the gift is meant for. You're not obeying God and you're trying to say that I'm this chief apostle. And you actually don't even love the widow or the, or the orphan in your church. You got more money in the bank account than you're going to use and it's sitting there with the canker worms eating it. You're financing buses and you're building buildings and you're theologian and you're theology and you're making doctors all over the place. But when it comes down to the widow sitting on the bank road, say, can the church help me? You got no help. And the Bible said, when your brother or your sister come to you and have need, don't send them away, but give them what it is they need. You're looking down your nose, and you are omitting love and unity of the church, of the brethren. You're not moving with the body. You're just moving with the assembly that's in the building with you. It is pride. It is deception. And you are fooling yourself. Because you are strutting, looking down at other people, and love and unity does not do that. This past Samson said, we'll see you Thursday.